Hi everybody out there and welcome to Vox Singing Academy's video podcast number 27. Woo! How are you doing today, Em? Still alive, yourself? Yes, very good. <laughs> so we're doing something a little bit different here today. We're not uh, in the uh, on, on the in the Vox office there and on the couch there. We're here in uh, in the Carnegie studio and we're going to be doing a video podcast regarding um, instantly improve your singing. So that's why we're behind the keyboard. So just in case we need to give some tips or, mm -hmm. or hints or give examples so that we can also stand up. I know we're going to be going over breathing as well too. So um, I want to talk about breathing so we need to be standing up when we're doing that. Before we get started though, if you guys like this channel, please subscribe. Bing, 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 bing. So you get little notifications. You can also find us on Facebook as well too. On uh, Instagram. On Instagram as well too. Vox Singing Academy. Yes, so check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and we also have uh, another uh, YouTube channel called The 5 Minute Singer, Ask Vox Singing Academy, so you can check that out as well too which, with lots of great free content. But then let's get stuck into this, um, this video podcast here. So we're just going to go over basically the main points um, about about basically becoming a better singer yep. instantly. Okay, so mm -hmm. I think I'll lead this one off here. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the first things is is basically posture. I can be your demo rat. Is, is, is posture is, is, is important. Yes, because <laughs> really we're, we're an acoustic based instrument. So we're, we're exactly the same as a guitar. Mm -hmm. Or if you, you know, if you bump the side of a grand piano, the spine, it's going to go out of, out of uh, pitch and if you bend the neck of the guitar. So same thing, I think we want to be re relaxed straight, not mm -hmm. militantly straight because this is going to be uncomfortable to do this, um, but we need to be just relaxed and, and, and relatively straight. Um, I think that on your bio on our website there's a great photo of you singing with a long ball gown on and you're mm -hmm. doing something like this. Yeah. Um, it looks like you're going for a big note, but you're, mm -hmm. you're relatively straight. So I think that's um, that, that's a big one that we need to probably put in there. We should have one of those little that, that slides in that photo. Yeah, I'll yeah, probably yeah. try to do that. <laughs> I'm probably I'm going to try to put that photo in there. But it's, a, it's I'm going to show you something straight away. What's the difference between kind of just slouching and singing straight? Let's start with a big note. <laughs> Probably pretty important. And just just looking around here in this studio, we have um, you know numerous people here that that are that are singing and, and going for big notes. And and um, well, he's not straight, but he's relatively straight. But you know, I'm looking yep. I'm looking at at, at 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 some of these. Yeah, he's relatively. But I'm I'm looking at um, you know, <laughs> the regurgitator one there, and he you know he's he's straight. He's bending over a little bit straight, so they're all relatively straight when they're singing these these bigger notes. So it is very important. So a really beginner tip, just to start with, is is mm -hmm. I always like to encourage my students to stand up if they're behind the piano as well too. Um, we haven't got the seat here behind the piano, but when I'm playing behind the piano, I'm just bending my hips, so I'm not bending my torso over. So when I'm sitting down, my upper torso is basically straight and I'm just bending mm -hmm. my hips. So that's a, a good one. Have the keyboard at, at a good height or the piano at a good height. So you're just bending just at the hips and mm -hmm. keeping your upper torso relatively straight. You're gonna get a lot better projection. Your diaphragm is really going to work uh, a lot better Mm -hmm. when your posture is relatively straight. And when you're performing live on stage and holding a microphone to your mouth, make sure that you are, if you need to go down to communicate with the audience while still singing or if you're going for a big note and you are required by like stage motion to bend back a little bit, so make sure that your bending point is your hips as well when you're standing up. Yeah. You're going to need to come this way, that's, that's the that's shortest fine. mic yeah. lead in the world here. Yeah. yeah, so if you're going, no, Brunswick Studio 2 was shorter but till the recent, till a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so when you're holding the microphone to your mouth and your posture is straight, make sure that your microphone is following you wherever you're going as well, so a bit of a microphone technique. But when you're bending, hey, see what's happening? My neck is completely straight. 
Yeah. I was not I was not doing this. Hey. Yeah. There we go. If you if you're going if you need to look up, for example, you're playing a big theater and you need to look somewhere uh, at the upper balcony or you're playing the arena and you need to look at the audience or a cameraman is filming you and you're going for a very effective shot. So this is what you need to do. You need to slightly tilt back maybe while keeping your neck again very straight, very relaxed. So kind of just sit down on your bum. Yeah! yeah! Rather than, yeah! So don't just tilt your head, tilt your whole body back a little bit. Just looking here, Kim Benzies is kind of doing that as well. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so he's pretty much straight, but he's just, he's just going back like this. So he's keeping himself straight, mm -hmm. but he's, he's, his posture is relatively straight. So yep. yes, it, it, it is an important one. Really just because the diaphragm can, can, work, um, can work a lot better as well too. That's really the main point with the posture being straight. Um, this, when you hunch over like this, or in the car is not a great one, because your diaphragm isn't going to really activate properly. Um, I think we the um, carpool karaoke with that guy from America. He drives a four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, so they're relatively, he's sort of sitting up when he's doing, mm -hmm. like nearly driving a truck. So he's, he's really straight when he's doing that. So if you are going to practice in a car, it is better to try to stay up keep your upper torso as straight as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Relax straight posture. So yeah. that, that's that's a, a great one to instantly get a better sound resonance as well too. Now, anything else you want to say about posture? Uh, quick trick, if you're still not sure whether you're straight or not, imagine there's a string attached to the top of your head and it just pulls you upwards. Yeah. You're, like, you're instantly lifted. Yeah. Or go to the wall, put your heels, bum, shoulder blades, back of your head to the wall. There we go. You're completely yeah. straight. Yeah. And you're completely relaxed because you're not trying to do anything like this. Yeah. You know, in, <laughs> in choir, I actually, I haven't got a book here with me, but in choir, I had um, a bad habit of tilting my head back. So they actually got me to sing with a book on my head. I could, oh. I could, uh, it's like a hard, <laughs> hard book on my head because mm -hmm. then if it went off, they knew I, it, would, yeah. it would slide off. So. That's, that's something that, that I did as well too, which helped me with my mm -hmm. posture, which I thought was very, very important. So okay. Let, let's keep it moving here, okay? So I wanna talk about um, mouth placements and looking in the mirror. I think mm -hmm. it's so important. Um, I had a student come in just this week, um, Juliet, and she had singing lessons uh, with another major establishment for a year. And I was perplexed and dumbfounded about mouth placements. Everything. She, they, they didn't tell her to look into the mirror. So if you want to improve, two things: look at yourself in the mirror, because your mouth does your articulation, pronunciation, diction, and look at some of your mm -hmm. better singers sing. Especially when we're in their middle to high range of their voice, their mouth will be working. And I always bring up that one particular. Um, um, a Filipino girl who sings on my own. What's her name again? The theatre girl, the dark girl. We're gonna put, mm -hmm. when you remember it, we're gonna put a link okay, into this. Yes. But you know who I'm talking about? Because mm -hmm. she goes, <laughs> it's nearly, and then it looks on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna put mm -hmm. a link into that when when that comes mm -hmm. comes up. Tia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm so blanking. Oh, oh. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to put a link in for that as well too. So um, have a look at your mouth in the mirror when you're singing, uh, because if you're not using your mouth, if you're going, on my own, it's not going to sound any good. You can hear that, it's not sounding good. But when you go, on my own, and get your mouth working, it's going to greatly help your uh, singing straight away. But then again, don't overdo it. We don't want to go, on my own, it's going to sound contrived <laughs> and, and it's going to sound unnatural. So, but mm -hmm. please look at your mouth and mirror. And the better singers, you look at the better singers: Adele, Ariana Grande, Celine Dion, uh, Whitney Houston. Big mouths, giant okay. mouth, especially yeah. up top. Brie Mercury, Aretha Franklin. You know, we're talking the greats here. You know, have a look at their mouths, especially when they're singing up more in the middle to higher mm -hmm. range. We have a principle here at Vox Singing Academy, which is the less down low, more up top approach. Okay, so, and I think it's a, I call it a, one of our secrets or a secret that I give to my teachers. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's gonna know about it. <laughs> but basically, I tell them, all my students, it's so a when they're singing down low, is less mouth placements, less support, and less volume. 
Okay, and then when they're singing up higher, more support, more volume, um, and and bigger mouth places. So if I'm just doing something like an A E I O U scale, going over the five vowels down here, it's less volume, smaller mouth places. So it's E C heart so U. Then up here, an octave higher, mid C, more volume, more support, bigger mouth places. So it's E C heart so U. But I wouldn't do that mouth placement down the octave lower, I wouldn't go E, C, heart. You can see it sound doesn't sound that great. So um, that's a really big thing. So if I'm singing um, something down low, when I find myself in times of trouble, I wouldn't be going, when I find myself down low. If I'm in the middle of the high range, when I find myself in times of trouble, I'd use my mouth more and more volume to get that to those higher notes. So that's a really big one. Guys, look in the mirror, practice in the mirror, look at yourself when you're singing, look at your favorite artists, and just try to articulate and pronunciate your words. You're going to sound a lot better if you do this. Anything that you want to add mm -hmm. to that, Anne? Yeah, uh, I'd like to give a quick demonstration for a female voice as well, yep. uh, if at all possible. So, for example, uh, most of us ladies can sing down, down to E and maybe a little bit lower, mezzo sopranos. If I try and push my volume. Uh, I'm going into bear growl, overdrive, vocal cry, whatever you call it, and it doesn't sound nice. So, but you need this amount of volume up top, uh, or in falsetto, uh, fairly quiet sound. But if we need to put a bit more power behind it, just contract your core. And there you go, big mouth. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good one as well to why we're on falsetto mm -hmm. then. Let's just talk falsetto. Because a lot of people, when they get to falsetto, especially teaching, they're lost in falsetto. That's just what I find anyway. When, for a male, down in, I'm in a lower male falsetto here. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm still using my mouth though when I'm here. Yeah. So it's, Not mm -hmm. loud here mm -hmm. because I, I if I go left, eh, see, it's not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> so when I'm up here, still my mouth is still big. See, eh, heart, so you. And that was only five notes higher, but I had to use considerably amount, a lot more volume, yeah. considerable amount of volume to get just mm -hmm. five notes higher up into my falsetto. So that's a, an important thing as well too. So we just talk true voice and falsetto. I'm still using my mouth a lot in falsetto, and I really learnt that, that a huge learning curve that I learnt from Bono was when he was doing Lemon, um, from the song Lemon, where he was mm -hmm. going, and you see him in the video clip, he goes, Lemon, see through the sunshine, she wore lemon, and he had mm -hmm. a really beautiful pronunciation on the recording, but then when you see him sing, his mouth's working really well, so that, that's, a, that's just a great example right mm -hmm. there. So, anything else you want to ask? Done. Well, mouth placement, well, that's mouth more placement. control, more up top, less down below. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away because we've got more to go. <laughs> We're not celebrating just here yet. We're going to give you more, more free great content here. Um, okay, so about that as well too, um, breath support when we're up singing up higher, okay? Especially when we're singing up higher. Again, the same thing. I use less tightening down low, and when I'm up higher, I use more tightening. So what you guys can do at home is keep your hand in your diaphragm when you're singing. Um, and, and just do sing something down low for now. Just mm -hmm. sing. When I find myself in times of trouble, you'll feel that it won't be as tight, mm -hmm. and you don't need as much support to support those notes. But when I need to sing it, when I find myself in times of trouble, I really have to, and then the trouble, which is higher, I really have to firm this up, and you can feel this, you can even, you can probably even see it, trouble, you see my stomach work, and I needed to support that much. Now, we need breast support 
underneath the vocal cords. We don't want expulsion, because if you push too, through too much air, you'll go, trouble, and you're gonna thin your voice out. This is a, I don't know about you, but this is a big thing that I have with beginners. I don't take on yep. a lot of beginners now, so it's probably more so the rest of you guys. Uh, but yep. they, they, before, the thing, yeah. they used to tend to say, okay, we're gonna sing, and we're gonna do this. I think, yes, <laughs> no, I think yep. you've gotta take in more air when you're singing up higher, but just a comfortable breath when you're singing mm -hmm. in the lower to middle part of your range. That's that's a huge big tip there. Mm -hmm. Less said again, we're going back to the same point, which I call it a secret of singing, is less down low, more up top principle. Yep. yep. So and that's all and, and monitor your stomach as well too, guys. Keep your hand in your stomach. Big tip here as well too. Um, is when you're tightening going up higher, your stomach should come out. Mm -hmm. Like someone's going to punch you in the stomach. So if you, you breathe air in, resist, and resist. then you tighten, it's ah uh, ah. Uh, you can see it. you can see <laughs> yeah. that coming out. My mm -hmm. thumb ah. Uh, okay, so don't pull it in, guys. You don't get any power by pulling your stomach mm -hmm. in. Nada, nothing. Huh? It's like uh, it's not going to happen. It's going to actually transfer the air up here. You're going to expel more air. It's just not going to happen. So you breathe air in through your diaphragm. And I'll send a link. I'll put a link in this video about our mm -hmm. playlist for for on YouTube yep. for we got for breathing copious techniques. amounts of of uh, tips uh, on our YouTube mm -hmm. channel. And but breathe air in. Then if you're going for a high note, you're singing higher. You tighten, and it's like your stomach nearly comes out a little bit. Not in. Don't pull it in to get mm -hmm. to get strength. A lot of. A lot, I also find a lot of females pull their stomach in because they want to pull their stomach in and have a flat stomach. We're conditioned by society that this is what we're supposed to do, like heaving bosoms and tiny waists. Mm. No, no, no. When you're singing, you need to imagine that there's literally a ball underneath your rib cage, like in the lower part of rib cage, balloon, and you want to fill it with air. Yeah. That's it. And what I also like doing, especially with children in classes, I'm going, okay, so I'm going to sing a note and you give me a karate chop. Yeah. Hey! There we go. Yeah. So if your note is stable, if your stom stomach muscles are contracted and locked on this medium high note, you will get beautiful projection. Remember to open your mouth as well though. <laughs> Something that I do sometimes with students if they're not getting that projection, I get them to tap on the first note of the cry, so if we're going up higher. Whoa, whoa, we just uh, activates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whoa, just gently. Whoa. As you mm -hmm. hit that first note, is, is that's just a, something that I do just gently with my guys. Mm -hmm. But breath support is very important. So just make sure, again, back to the principle, less down low, more up top. Keep it relaxed down low. Firm it up a little bit in the middle and quite firm toward the top if you have to go for some big high, higher yep. notes. Um, falsetto, again, same, same principle. I, I use less down low in my falsetto. So here, we, but up here, we. I have to tighten up quite a lot to, to, to get that. So same principle with falsetto as well too, guys. Another caveat, I would like to m make sure that you understand it really, really well. Think of it as water pressure, air pressure, water pressure. So this pressure has to come from somewhere, right? So your sound. Your mouth needs to be open like a water tap. But if you try and step on the water pipe and squeeze it, like tighten your neck for example, no sound will come out. So this part needs to work, this part needs to work, everything in the middle needs to be relaxed. Your shoulders and your neck nice and loose. Yeah, exactly. So again, just another secret, we're just giving away all our secrets <laughs> here today, <clears throat> is Again, going back looking in the mirror, if you see your neck tightening when you're going up higher, it's giving you, your body is giving you a signal, hey, can you please tighten your stomach instead? Mm -hmm. And that's really one of the reasons, even when you first come to lessons with me, is to get into breathing and make sure that this is working for you, because I know you do, uh, you know, you do crazy hours, like you do 10 hours a day sometimes um, of teaching and just, just... Hello, my Tuesday and Thursday students, it, I love you so much. It's insane, <laughs> insane hours. But the whole thing is, is that the big thing with, even with me and, and with you as well, too, like I've got, I've got massive days on Wednesdays, is um, where 
teaching the same technique that we practice and use. You know, like mm -hmm. my, again, I'm, I teach ten hours uh, on the on the Wednesday sometimes, and if my voice isn't in good shape and I didn't get enough rest the night before. My eight, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock guys aren't gonna get the value that they should, and, and they deserve just as much value as what yep. my 12 o'clock and one o'clock uh, guys do as well too. So, and my voice is general, is never, ever uh, fatiguing, because I'm always using this all the time. Cool. Exactly. All right, <laughs> let's move to the next point here. Ah, oh, no, Em, you wanted to give three mm -hmm. examples of, when we're supporting, we need to support up higher, but we also, one of the points you wanted to work on was finishing off, yeah? Yeah, finishing off the notes. So a lot, of, a lot of the time people would sing, Never mind, I'll find someone like you. And that's it. So people would stop the phrase too early. So if we keep singing Adele, there are three ways, three basic ways to finish the note off. Can I just, can I just cut in one second? Mm -hmm. If you're dropping off your note, like I know you're about to go into, I would rather you cut the note off short like that than go, I'm someone like you, and, yeah. and do that. So I'd rather you cut it off short like that, again, because you're going to sound better. Mm -hmm. This is about improving your singing. So it's always better to hold it. And if you feel your voice is shaking, you start to lose it, cut it there. Because the last word of the phrase, they're giving away another secret here. We're not going to have any secrets left here. The last word of the phrase, guys, is the most beeping important word of the whole song. Because if you mess that up, people are going to judge you from that. I was going to give an example, but we're going to take you from there, okay? But I'm going to sing this. I'm going to mess up the last two words, okay? Um, Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. Now... You're going to say, oh, he didn't sound that good. But eight, the first 80% was very good. Yeah. The last two words were no good. Now, if I reverse it, help me if you can, I'm feeling down. He's going to say, he didn't sound mm -hmm. too bad because I finished it off. Well, it was awful at the start. Awful. Recovery. Mouth wasn't working. It was pitching. Recovered. Got it to the end. That's the last thing that people hear. So that's a really big, important mm -hmm. tip there as well, too, to instantly improve your voice. Focus on the last word and get that last word in picture. Make sure the last word's great. Sorry, Em. Back yeah. to what you're you, you're saying. Finishing off. Yeah. So three basic ways to finish off. Way number one: just hold a note for a little bit, maybe with a bit of a crescendo in the middle and diminuendo down the end. Can you go into those technical words for us? Mm -hmm. Crescendo, the, increase the volume, <laughs> diminuendo, decrease the volume. Fade out. These are fade in, fade out. A lot of these words that we use here, <laughs> falsetto, legato, staccato, they're Italian words. That's where the first study of the voice mm -hmm. um, started, was in Italy, and then went to Germany, and then, then the UK, and then fourth was Russia, yeah? Mm. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> I just made that up. But I definitely know that <laughs> the first two two documented cases of study was Italy and then and then Germany. Okay, so let's let's try number three. Maybe we can go through with this without interruptions. This guy two, really oh. really wants to share like everything straight away. I just put two Contain yourself. I put two tea bags in my tea. Bag. That's, that's why it's like. Oh, they caffeinated. Okay, so point number one. Hold the note, increase the volume, decrease the volume. Hey. Make sure you stay on the, on the note straight away. Hey. So you can so fade out. Fade out. Mm -hmm. It's a popular ne one. <clears throat> Next important thing that you can do is do a little bit, bit of a trill or a little bit of a run. Hey. He, ha. So teeny tiny flicks down, or maybe a flick up. Hey, ho. Even f flicking in falsetto, the very last endings of the note. What was the third way to finish this off? Can I just add something in there? There's also, guys, you're hitting a high note. Um, yeah! And if you feel that you're gonna crumble and fall and break off this note, run down the note. So go, yeah! So do a step down, which takes the voice mm -hmm. down, then you can hold and sustain the mm -hmm. lower note more comfortably. So that's another trick as well mm -hmm. too. So uh, if you've got a high note, yeah! Or 
or just one note. Yeah! Just like that. It's a lot easier to do that and to finish on a lower note than more, more so sustain a, a high note. Now that was that was pretty much it. So we had we had three finishes, pretty much straight arts. Going arts louder and then arts going quieter. So that was really the thing. And then all doing doing a run with it. The main thing is, guys, is make sure it's in pitch because a lot of people, when they fade out notes, M, they fade them flat. Yep. They go, ah, like that. Hold it. If you're going to fade, hold the note straight, ah, and then fade it. But don't fade the mm -hmm. actual pitch of the note. So that's really a, a really a big thing for me. Listen to a lot of your favourite singers, what, what your favourite singers do. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Adele likes to hold things straight. Mm -hmm. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. Actually, that mm -hmm. was two opposites there. Yeah. She, she did a run on mm -hmm. one and a straight on, on another one. Um, Ed Sheeran loves to trill, mm -hmm. loves to move on, on, his, on his things. So there's no right or wrong way. Um, just make sure that your last note is always in pitch mm -hmm. and sounding the best. Yay! Finish off your notes. Finish, Finish off your notes. notes. Very important. <laughs> Remember, it's the most important word of the phrase. Okay. Now, listen closely to become instantly better. Listen closely to your favourite singers and work through the song and then try to emulate what they are doing. A very important thing. Copy what other people are doing and then try to improve or do it as good as what they are or, or even better if you possibly can. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big thing. We have song breakdowns in our lessons where we break down songs and we write the numbers next to every line so we know how, well the student knows how loud they're going to sing and we would highlight what we want them to cry, smile and everything. So we have a very um, easy but efficient way to work through songs and guys do the same thing with your songs. So if you hear um, someone singing firmly like I want to break free. I sing it that firm. The big thing is, is that when students are listening to songs, always remember that when you listen to the recorded version of the song, it's mixed. So it's mixed and mustard. So all the sounds are compressed, so they sound even, so the, the voice isn't too loud than anything else. So always pop the headphones on and try to think of how loud they'll be singing. Possibly, we use fours. I use fours with my gears in classes, but maybe you might want to use out of five or out of ten, mm -hmm. um, how loud they're, they're singing out of ten because you know there are some songs that are uh, very quiet. Yes, I do, I believe. You know, Sam Smith mm -hmm. is very quiet mm -hmm. there, um, but then he would sing also louder through through the rest of the song. So work out what they're doing and then try to emul emulate that yourself mm -hmm. as well too. So working through the song, are they going louder? Are they using the mouth more? Are they holding and supporting? Whatever it might be, and try to emulate that in the song. Mm -hmm. And you can find examples of that in some of our playlists where Peter has free posted like whole lessons where he works with students, with male and female students alike, yep. working through songs of different levels, easy, low, difficult, high. So the one with Carla is really, really cool. I really like that yeah. one. Um, the, the playlist is called Actual actual Singing Lessons, yeah. Actual VSA Singing Lessons. Yeah. So jump on that. You'll see a bunch of my lessons on there with different scenarios, scales, song breakdown. So have a look through that. Or always remember as well too, when you're hearing a song that's recorded, guys, Remember that they could have had 10 or 15 goes of this to record it. A lot of stuff, if you listen to Panic at the Disco, it's all punched in. It's got one line is, is over the top of the next. So make sure that you um, take these recordings with a bit of a grain of salt and, and have breaths in certain places wherever you feel that you need to, to breathe or cut things shorter so that you can work through through these bits and pieces in the song. But really just yeah, listening to your favourite singers um, with, within your skill level. I think it's very important that we choose songs that are within your skill level that are, that are fun, fun for you to do. We don't want to be worrying and stressed going, Oh God, am I going to be able to hit this note or do this chorus consistently? Mm -hmm. Try it though, definitely. You're not going to know unless you have a go, okay? So try singing some of your favourite songs. Do it. Don't be scared. It's just mm -hmm. you and, and the song in the room. Mm -hmm. And if it's a little bit high, 
pick, pick a, a, a sonnet in the lower key. One of my students was doing Drops of Jupiter by Train, and he was straining up high to consistently get this. And also, because he was singing so high consistently, he was running out of breath through the song. Mm -hmm. And then we, we found a lower version of the song which actually sounded better. It was by... Was it, was it live? No, 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 it wasn't live, it was recorded, and it was recorded by a big guy, um, I think they're called Broyce Avenue or something like that, mm -hmm. something Avenue, it was Broyce Avenue, <laughs> and he actually sings it lower, and you know what, it sounds better, mm -hmm. I think the guy from Train is actually, it's like, now she's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in my head, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it's too high for him, mm -hmm. this Broyce Avenue, whatever it is, He's singing it, I think, a third lower. It sounds so much better. Mm -hmm. I, I just listened to it and I went, wow, that's what the key should have been in originally. So, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. check it out. I'm just I'm, I'm plugging that there. And then my student did it in a lower key. Yeah. Sounded so much better. He had more fun doing it. So he was having fun doing it, really, basically. That was the main thing. Yeah, don't be afraid to look at what your f uh, favorite singers do as well. Because, for example, if we take George Ezra, a baritone, really good uh, beginner songs for baritones. Probably heavy baritone. Yeah, lower lower type of sound, but he's, he's got quite a range on him as well. Um, he very consistently, his record, live recordings are uh, in one key and his live performances are uh, three semitones, minor third, down. Um, and it sounds great both times. So if you are still struggling figuring out, so which mouth placements should I do? Uh, what is he doing on this particular point? Pull up a live video, yep. not the music video where everything is like so pretty, um, but the one where a singer actually sings live. Uh, and literally rewind, put YouTube on slow. There's this gear down below that if you press on it in settings and select speed, 0.75, it will all start playing way slower. This is what I like doing, especially with my beginner students, to show them these videos on slow so they can see what's happening with the mouth and it will be easier to figure out the melody if you're still struggling with it to figure out how the way that the singers finish off the lines sometimes you will be able to see how their core works if, if like half the body is in frame sometimes you will be literally be able to see how they contract their core muscles to go into higher notes so use YouTube, it's excellent um, don't just use the audio, use video yep. uh, to analyze as well <coughs> Excellent. Well, that brings us up, up to our last point, which is record and analyze yourself. Yes. I think this is a, a really big important one as well too, so recording yourself and analyze yourself and you know, see whether you can hear if you're a little bit flat and then try to fix that and record that again. Um, so I think recording and analyzing is a very, very important thing. Mm -hmm. Then if you're still having troubles, I say, Seek professional help. Get some get some singing lessons. Get a uh, singing teacher. Get a singing, get, <laughs> get, get a great singing teacher because it will save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. And um, you know, I know. I, look, I took singing lessons for a long time when I was young, um, and it really helped me uh, progress the way that I wanted to progress. And I think also as well too, um, you'll find a singing teacher that's good for you. You might need to tr try a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I I tried numerous singing teachers and I, I knew what worked for me and what didn't. And even the ones that weren't that great, there was always one or two points that I took away mm -hmm. from from them. Um, so I think that's, that's a big thing. But self-analyzation, so recording yourself and even on video, seeing what you're doing, you can see what your mouth's doing. But then again, don't be too overly critical. Focus on one point. You know, say, yeah. okay, what's what's the point that sounded the worst? Uh, was it my pitch? Was it my articulation? Was it um, was I running out of breath? So focus on one thing and one thing only, and just work on that. Um, that's that's all, all what I can really sort of say is is record yourself and self analyze. Mm -hmm. And recording yourself is also great. For example, in a few months when you return and you watch your first recording, you go, "Oh my God, I improved so much! Now I can do so much better with this song." You know, I think it's I think it's great <laughs> that you see that you set yeah. benchmarks 
But you can also put this on, on YouTube and say, look, this, guys, this is how much I've improved. This is the work that I've done. And a really big um, point with that is you can see some early Ed Sheeran stuff in his early teens when he was mm -hmm. playing and singing, where he wasn't that great and he, he, was, he wasn't that great at all. And he's really improved and he's put the hard work in. And I th also think that for more of the rock guys, there's, there's a band called Tool out there when they're probably the biggest progressive rock band ever. Come on, Tool, release your new album already. How yes. much longer can we wait? <laughs> but you can actually see Maynard sing sober um, on that before he joined Tool, and it was awful. It was really not good at all. Um, and so, and then you can see them see the improvement that he's made over. I think it was the, the year or two uh, when when he was obviously taking lessons and getting better and, and improved. So um, there there are lots of there are lots of things that you can you, you can look up, guys. Um, you know, there's another guy from a band called Iron Maiden, and he's actually you can go onto YouTube and you can actually listen to his very first demo. His first demo song was called Dracula. So you can listen to Bruce Dickinson's very first demo. <laughs> it's awful. It's bad. Um, and he is probably one of the, the best singers going around. Uh, absolutely amazing. So this just happens with work, and but that's a self-assessment. So he would have heard that and said, look, I'm going to go and do do this, this, and this. And um, yeah, so and you can do that y yourself as well too. Yeah. Okay, just, just we're going to reiterate the top points here again. Okay, so instantly improve your singing posture, nice and straight and relaxed. Not necessarily the number one one. These are all together. <laughs> okay, um, our principle: less down low, more up top. Principle that's to do with your mouth and support and volume. Okay, mm -hmm. so less down low, more up top. Look at your mouth in the mirror. Look at your whole body in the mirror if you can, because you're going to see what's happening. You're going to see what your mouth's doing, your neck's doing, your diaphragm, your breathing, your shoulders, everything. So have a look at what you're doing. Uh, look in the mirror. You're going to get a lot of points from looking in the mirror. Uh, breath support, really important. Again, less down low, more up top. Okay, keep it relaxed down low. Do more up top. Remember to finish off your last word. The last word's the most important one. Um, Listen closer to your favourite singers. Learn from the greats, whatever that is. Even if you're doing sport, watch Jordan, uh, Michael Jordan. If you want to become a basketball player, listen to your favourite people. Try to emulate what they're doing and try to do it to the best of your ability. Choose songs that are within your skill level. Keep it fun. We don't want to be going, oh God, I've been working on this one high note for four weeks. I can't get it. Let's do something that's a little bit lower, as I said, with train. Record and analyze yourself so you've got a documentation of what you're doing. Um, if this is not uh, not getting improvement, seek professional help. Yes. And the, those are the 5,000 little things that you need to control. Not quite that, yeah. <laughs> but again, remember when you, when you um, analyze yourself, focus on one point. Yeah. Just focus on, on the point that you think is the worst. And most importantly, don't quit. Don't yeah. give up. Work ethic. Don't give up. Work, Keep work, going. Work, work, work. work. All right, work, Em. Work, work, work. Let's work, sign work, off work, here. Work. Thank you very much, Em. Really appreciate Yay. it. Yay! Nice having you. And guys, We'll see you singing hopefully up on stage. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or get in contact with us on any social media and we'll be sure to get back to any of your questions. If we think the question is a ripper, we will make a video for you signing off. Thanks, Sam. High Woo! five. See you guys. Talk soon. Bye-bye.